All right, Adobe, you win. I was about this close to canceling my services the next time it renewed, but with your recent update with Lightroom, you kept me interested for a little while. So if you didn't know, Adobe released a product recently called Masks and they're really interesting because they actually changed the way I work. I used to be either on Capture One or go straight to Photoshop and edit my photos because I disliked Lightroom a lot. I thought it was a unnecessary step in my workflow. But with Masks, it changed a lot of things and how I developed my images. So let's dive into it. So to get that option of what I'm about to show you, you have to make sure that you're on the latest version of Lightroom. So go ahead and update it if you haven't done so already and come back to this video. And if you're already there, well, let's look into it. So right now I'm looking at my laptop and I'm seeing the image. So um, I lit this background red because it was the quote unquote concept of the actual shoot. But as you can see, there are some issues with the background. And the advantage of masks that they just released is that you can actually separate the background and the foreground without having to do any clipping or actually going to Photoshop and using those tools. Because let's be honest, they work in the exact same way that actually Photoshop uses. Uh, if you ever you go to Photoshop and you go into, uh, you press W for select subject and then you press the select subject function, it'll do exactly the same thing, but you can do it now with Lightroom and save tons of time. So you basically have to go to your masking selection and then you'll see an option called add new mask. And it's kind of weird. It's actually hidden and tucked away inside of the menu. Um, so I'm showing you here, basically you have to go into your develop settings and then go to the fourth option and then it's going to be called masking. And there you'll find the old ways of masking your subject or actually adding some radiant lights or any modification that you want to do to the lighting or some part of the area without changing the overall photo. Uh, and for this one, what we're going to do is that we're going to add a bit of light to Rosie. So let's click subject and then it's currently looking to detect the subject. So let's give it a second. And it's done. And from there, you can actually choose the color that you want to. So you can actually go uh, red, which it wouldn't make sense in my case because everything is pretty much red and it's a default setting. So let's go green. So because it's a just nice color contrast. So after that is done, perfect. Now we can adjust based on the isolation that Lightroom gave us. So because it recognized that there's a shape, there's a human being in front of that red background, we can actually make some difference. So let's just, for the fun of it, mess around. So we'll increase the exposure a bit because of some reasons. Um, we like the shadows. We want to see more details inside of the wardrobe. Perfect. Uh, we want to crush the blacks a bit just for fun. You'll give like a good punch. Um, and do you want to sharpen her? Yeah, we want to sharpen her up, you know, just to give a bit of a distance. And we can, uh, what else can we do? We can also adjust the U. I wouldn't do that on a human because it's a lot of, a lot of weird. But if every day there's a case that you need to adjust it quickly, well, now you can do so in Lightroom. Pretty awesome. And uh, what else can we do? We can control the highlights because, you know, always control the highlights. And let's say you have a problem with temperature. So basically you haven't pro properly, especially outdoors, you haven't properly balanced your white balance and you want to make a contrast between this subject and the actual background. You can do so at the raw level with Lightroom and without having to go into Photoshop. Really cool. So let's do that. So let's change your temperature. Just make it a little cooler, you know, just for the sake of it. And now they also introduce some color range. So let's say you want to go even deeper into it. You can also select the range. So basically it's going to mask uh, with the area of skin just based on the eyedropper tool that you picked. And from there, what we'll do is uh, we'll increase uh, the, we'll actually desaturate the skin a little bit, you know, just for the fun of it. Just make it really purely, pure, 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 purely white, um, if that's the case that you want to do. And uh, let's also adjust the U just a little bit. No, just make it a little more pink. Again, nothing that I would do normally, but just to show you the power of this application. And we can change the exposure. Uh, let's say that you like this ghostly effect, or let's bring it back because we're normal people. And we'll increase the shadows a little bit, you know, just to have less of those imperfections. And um, let's call it a day. Now that you've done that, you can also create mask on top of mask on top of mask. And what's fun about it is because everything is separated between the subject and also the skin that you selected, let's play with the background. So in this case, the background is called sky in general. And if you ever you have an image that has a, basically a bit of headroom, it will be called sky. So just keep that in mind. 
So it's loading. Let's give it a second here. So as you can see, I picked the top portion as it's considered sky. So what we can do here, we can either adjust it individually or even better, we can do another color range and just pick this range, right? So it's going to help us uh, select the parts that we want and possibly try to match it with the right portion that is a little undercooked. So let's do that. So let's uh, play with the exposure a bit. It will not be the issue. Oh, it kind of is matching here, but you can see there's a shadow that is coming uh, from the, because it was written by the left, it was coming to the right, so we can play with that. So let's reduce the exposure just a little bit. No, it makes it automatically more saturated. Again, we're playing at the raw level, so it's really interesting. And we have a lot more flexibility than working with a JPEG. I love JPEGs, but raw is raw. Let's bring down the shadows a little bit. Oh, it's getting there, it's getting equal. Now let's just uh, play with the text. Nothing to texture because there's nothing really to see in the background. It should be blurred. Uh, if you want to, let's say, just mess around and just throw it down and make sure there's no texture, you can do so. And uh, let's also play with the highlights, just to make sure they're a little crushed. And voila. And, like that, and again, this has been under less than two minutes. We did all these massive corrections which would have taken you minutes, like so many minutes inside of Photoshop or any other application. Again, Capture One is pretty good for that, but I'm glad to see that Lightroom is actually walking up to there. And then uh, because that, let's say that dark portion really bothers me and I really want to fix it. Let's see if the, by doing another color range, we can actually fix it. So we can actually just pick that section Again, it's going to play with Rosie, but we can actually individually fix her afterwards if you want to. Let's just add a bit of, retrieve a bit of shadows again, just to make everything equal so you can see it's crushing it. And uh, maybe by raising the blacks, we're getting less and less shadow. So that's the nutshell of this application. So if you can see the power, so if I say, let's say you like your developments, super easy, you copy them. You also copy your masking options. And then you can apply to another set of image. So let's say, let's pick an image here. Put another pose. So you like this pose, you like what you did, and then you want to apply the same corrections to this image. It's pretty simple. You control V, control C. It's going to do some adjustments. And then you can have, you just have to refresh. You select subject, so you update it. But then it's going to isolate the subject from the background with the same setting that you applied. So if ever you use settings that you use in your studio, outdoor, they're consistent, fairly easy to, to snap and go. And with that said, now you can actually make some, create some small adjustments um, because there might be a little difference. But let's say that, let's pretend that it was, it was not correct. You can actually turn on the exposure the exact same way that you had on the previous image. And that to me is a massive improvement on the workflow or on the way that you'll process your photos because you'll be saving a lot of time in Lightroom and putting them to Photoshop, doing the small fixes, and boom, 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 you release your photos. So I hope the function that you just saw was really helpful for your workflow. In my opinion, it really changed a lot the way I work because I can go way faster now and I don't have the excuses of, oh my God, I have to fix this, I have to do some clipping, stuff like that. You can actually, if it's not super precise work, you can actually go a lot more faster by just using AI, which is really wonderful. And it's based on Lightroom and it's really well connected to Photoshop. So it's really great. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate a like because right now the dislike has disappeared and I don't know if you like it or not. So make sure you hit that like and also comment if you have any questions about the actual process. This has been Evans B, Montreal photographer, wishing you a good set of Lightroom for the first time in this channel. Cheers.